Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. You'll notice that this is not significant figures, as I uh, alluded to last time at the end of last lesson. Uh, I'm sorry, I hope you're not disappointed, but I realize we really should talk about scientific notation first. Uh, scientific notation is a way of dealing with large or small numbers. Uh, some of you have already have uh, experienced this. If you haven't, it's very simple to deal with. So we'll talk about big numbers, small numbers. We'll talk about your calculator. Good times will be had. And so again, we have to deal with big or small numbers in chemistry. Atoms are small, if no one has told you that already. They have pretty tiny diameters, like for example, carbon. You're dealing with an extremely tiny uh, diameter in meters. And something like a carbon atom, in terms of mass, is going to be also a tremendously small number. And those many zeros uh, essentially renders that useless in, in most mathematical calculations. Keeping track of all that would be a nightmare. And not only do we have small numbers, we have big numbers. If you want enough atoms to work with in the laboratory, then you're going to need a lot of them. So if we chose something like 12 grams of carbon, well, you would end up with a gigantic number of atoms. Now that's a, that's a slightly uh, rounded number, but that value is, is, is called Avogadro's number. And we'll learn more about that later. But that's a, it's a big number in chemistry. And so how do we write big and small numbers where we actually don't take up that much paper? And so that's scientific notation. Scientific notation for large numbers is a very simple idea. So let's uh, take this number. The $64,000 question is, how do you write 64,000 in scientific notation? You could rewrite this number a bunch of different ways. And all these are valid ways. All of these still equal 64,000 when you multiply them together. The trick to scientific notation is to pick the one number where there's only one digit to the left of the decimal. And the reason we do that is for just consistency, so that we all are using the same baseline. So in this case, 6.4 times 10,000 equals 64,000. And that's the start of scientific notation. All we need to do is clean up everything to the right of the multiplication sign. And so you rewrite 10,000 in this case as 10 to the fourth. That's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 10 to the fourth. And that's scientific notation, that's it. So you're not creating a new number, you're simply taking the number you have and rewriting it into what's called scientific notation. And that's all there is to it. If you're using your calculator, this will probably get spit out as 6.4e4, uh, but it means the same thing. Now, the shortcut to this is, conceptually, of course, you want to understand this, but you, you look to where the decimal is or where it would be. There wasn't a decimal there to start with, uh, but there is one there now just for the sake of this exercise. And as you can see, it would take one, two, three, and then finally a fourth space to get only one digit to the left, and so that's, that's where that four comes from. Now, tiny numbers, numbers less than one, follow the exact same format, but for some reason this is where students make all their mistakes with scientific notation, so be careful. Um, it's the same idea. We need to slide it so there's only one number to the left of the decimal. So this time, in, in, in tiny numbers, you'll be going to the right. And so all you do is you count how many places you have to slide the decimal place over to get one digit to the right, I mean to the left of the, of the decimal. So we go in one, two, three, four, and then finally five times. And that becomes the exponent of 10. Now it's going to be a negative exponent this time because we're moving to the right, not the left. But the fact that it was negative isn't what students mess up. For some reason, a lot of students will end up with 2.3 times 10 to the negative fourth or 2.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. So just be very careful about this. Um, know that this is, a, uh, this is a technique prone to error, and make sure that it's not you making those errors here. Finally, just let me talk about your calculator for a second. Uh, unless you have a very, very inexpensive calculator, something that you would get for free for opening a bank account, um, your calculator probably handles scientific notation. Uh, take the time, if you don't have your instruction manual, look it up on the internet, take the time to learn how to use the scientific notation button on your calculator. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of heartache in the end. Uh, students often try to type this out, like they'll, they'll type out 6.4 times 10 caret 4. Um, and that's mathematically correct, but in terms of orders of operations, you will run into lots of mistakes there. Um, so learn how to use that exponent button or the scientific notation button. It's, it's usually an E, E button that's probably a primary function. If not, it'll be a secondary function on your calculator, instead of having to try to use parentheses to keep them all in order. So that's it. Just avoid the heartache of, of trying to skip scientific notation buttons on your calculator. Obviously, going back to normal notation is the same idea. It's the same principle. You'll want to practice that. 
And now that we know how to read scales, and now we know how to put numbers in scientific notation, we'll wrap it all up and show you how to use those numbers in math correctly, and that's dealing with significant figures. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.